What's going on? Okay, now it's recording. Oh, sorry. Okay, lip. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. The, the space is the vestibule, the gingiva or a gum, the teeth. The tissue that connects the lip to the gingiva, that little white line that's right there, is the labial frenulum. We're going to open up the oral cavity by rotating the tongue out. So again, where the tongue is attached to the soft palate right here, this tissue right here is the palatal glossal arch. This is the soft palate, and that's the hard palate. From that palatal glossal arch forward, this open area here is the oral cavity. This open area behind it is the oral pharynx. The nasal pharynx is underneath, and the common opening is the laryngeal pharynx. These little nubs here are the palatine tonsils. <clears throat> we have the tongue itself, the apex at the tip. There is a slight indentation in the center of the lingual sulcus. We have the papillae and the cat, the hard ones that are very spiky are the filiform papillae. All the small brown dots that are difficult to see right here, the little tiny ones are the fungiform papillae. There should be a line of very round ones back here, which this cat's too mature to show, is the valet papillae. I think he has one right there, but I don't think the camera can pick that up. And then the ones that grow off to the side of the foliate papillae. The tongue is held to the bottom of the mouth by the lingual frenulum, which is this transverse piece of tissue here. Right there, sticking out. Then we get down to the larynx. The larynx has the thyroid cartilage, which is the bigger one. The smaller ring right here is the cricoid cartilage as it becomes the trachea with the cartilaginous rings. The inside of the larynx has a valve. The flap is the epiglottis. And then we open up the larynx, that big piece of white tissue. Let me see if I can get it open there. That big piece of tissue sticking up, the probe's bouncing against right there is the true vocal cord. The little smaller flap in front of it right there is the false vocal cord. On the outside of the oral cavity, we have the salivary glands, the parotid gland with the parotid duct, the submandibular gland. These are lymph nodes. We go underneath and we can find the parotid uh, submandibular duct, which is that white piece of duct work that goes across there like that. The gland that's attached to it right there looks triangular, is the sublingual gland. This is the thyroid gland right here, so it's right alongside and just inferior to the larynx. If you can find a small white spot on the back side, that's the parathyroid. The thymus gland would sit right here over the top of the heart, coming up to the top of the chest. It's been removed so we can see the blood vessels. The esophagus is behind the trachea, right here, it's that tube. Also that right there. Uh, we have the vagus nerve, it's running right alongside the carotid. And there should be a phrenic nerve, which I think this guy has been detached. That's the vagus, which will run right over the root of the lung. The root of the lung is this base right here going to the diaphragm, so it's been cut, but it'll look like a small wire going right to that. The lungs, again sitting in the pleural cavity, they are, the pleural cavity is covered with the parietal pleura, on the lung is the visceral pleura, and we have the right side, uh, and the right side and the left side, so this is the left superior, left middle, and left inferior lobe. We have the right superior, right middle, right inferior lobe, and the accessory lobe. Okay. This piece of tissue right here is a part of the parietal pleura. It would tent over the, the heart and the accessory lobes. The cavity within it is the mediastinum. The heart would sit in the pericardial sac, which again has been removed, and is of course the heart. The trachea bifurcates into the primary bronchi, which is underneath all of this, which I'm not going to dig down to do. Okay. The diaphragm, the liver, we have the quadrate lobe, which is the gallbladder dividing the right medial lobe. Okay. We have the right lateral lobe and the caudate lobe, which is here as well as here. We have the left medial lobe and the left lateral lobe. The piece of transverse tissue that goes in between the diaphragm and the two right and left sides of the liver right here, it's broken, is the falciform ligament. The thickening on its edge is the round ligament. We have the stomach. This one was evidently very full. So we have the esophagus coming in right here. So this is the cardiac portion of the stomach. The hump of any organ is always a fundus. This is the body of the stomach, the pyloric region, and that indentation indicates the pyloric valve. 
On the inside of the stomach, there should be folds, which we don't see many of right here, but these folds are the rugae. The curve of the stomach on the inside is the lesser curvature. On the outside is the greater curvature. Attaching to the greater curvature is the greater omentum. The greater omentum tents around and forms a cavity within itself. That cavity is the omentum bursa. Another piece of the greater omentum goes over towards the spleen, which is my hand here. So this is the gastrosplenic ligament. The lesser curvature has a mesentery called the lesser omentum, which would tent over the top of this. You just see little pieces of it right here. Then we begin the small intestine, the duodenum is circling around. That curve is the duodenum. As soon as it turns, it's now the jejunum. In the curve of the duodenum is the pancreas. This would be the dorsal lobe of the cat. This is the ventral lobe of the pancreas of the cat. And a human is just a head, body, and tail going over towards the spleen. The duodenum would be affixed to the body wall by a mesentery that's broken here. That would be the mesoduodenum. The rest of the small intestine is held together by the mesentery or mesentery proper. As we get down to the colon, this is the last piece of the small intestine here. That's the ileum. In between here where this thickening is, is the ileocecal valve. And we have the large intestine, the cecum. Again, in a human, the appendix would be right here. We have the ascending, transverse, and descending colon. And again, that should be sigmoid, then rectum, and then anus. Holding the colon to the body wall is this mesentery, that's the mesocolon. On the back body wall we have the kidney, okay, and the adrenal gland. The kidney, if you open up the cat, has only one pyramid, okay, but you can definitely see the outer cortex, the whole center of which is the medulla. This is also the renal pyramid and the renal papilla. Coming from the uh, renal area right here is the ureter which drains the urine down to the urinary bladder, which is right here. And then this is the urethra going to the outside. The bladder is held in place by three ligaments, two lateral ones, sometimes called the umbilical ligaments, and one medial one right here called the median ligament. Okay. Coming off the gallbladder, which is right there, okay, we have the common bile duct common bile duct bifurcates right here to form the cystic duct which goes over the gallbladder and the hepatic ducts which go back into the liver itself. This is a female, immature. The ovary is this little bean-like object right there. On the other side you see a little tiny tube that circles around. That's the oviduct. Where it has a little fringe right here at the opening is the fimbria. And then this large tube going down on both sides is part of the uterus. These are the uterine horns. And we have the body of the uterus. This enlargement right here is the cervix. And then that would be the vagina that we've opened up. And then the common area between the urethra and the vagina is the vestibule. Okay. Going back to do the blood vessels. Coming off the heart, we have the superior vena cava. The blood vessels that go up that are broken right here would go to the sternum. Those are the internal mammaries or internal thoracic arteries and veins. If I pick the, the lungs up, you'll see a vein that circles back, it picks up the drainage from the intercostals. This is the azygous vein. The superior vena cava comes up and bifurcates into the uh, brachiocephalics, which comes over here and gives rise to one that's cutting out to the arm, so that's the subclavian vein, and now becomes the jugular, so this is the external jugular running to the outside. And this little tiny one right here, it's almost like a thread running right alongside the carotid, is the internal jugular. <clears throat> the arteries, they come off the aortic arch, which has a little ball of fat right there, but that's the arch right there. And we have two arteries, which are difficult to see here. There's this one, and the one that's underneath right there, okay. This is the brachiocephalic artery, and that's the left subclavian. The brachiocephalic is going to divide three times. So you can see there's a branch right there, right over here, and another one right there that I'm bouncing against. So we have the left common carotid, the right common carotid, and the right subclavian. The common carotid continues up. It should break into the internal and external carotids, but the cat does not have an internal carotid. It's filled in, so we don't go any further than that. The, the uh, subclavian, we're going to follow the left side here, has a branch that goes straight down. That's the costal cervical. The one that continues forward right here underneath the jugular is the thyrocervical. And again, the subclavian continues out through the arm 
goes out into the axillary space, so now these are the axillary arteries and veins. We have a branch that goes deep, so you see the artery going deep as well as the vein, so that's the subscapular artery and vein. As it goes out to the arm, it's now the brachial artery and vein. A large number of nerves right here in the axillary area is the brachial plexus. We follow it out here where it breaks into three. We have the ulnar nerve, the median nerve, and this big, very large one right here is the radial nerve. The external jugular comes up to alongside the face. It splits into the posterior facial, the anterior facial, and going across, which has already been cut here, is the transverse jugular. Going deep from the external jugular and the thyrocervical are these two veins and arteries. These are the transverse scapular going down. And you can see the vein on the outside that meets that is the cephalic. Below the level of the heart, we have the inferior vena cava. And coming down through the thoracic area is the thoracic aorta. When it penetrates the diaphragm, it now becomes the abdominal aorta. And here's the inferior vena cava again. We have three arteries that come up to the viscera. The first branch right here is the celiac, the next branch is the superior mesenteric, and the one that goes to the colon is the inferior mesenteric. Along the body wall, we have across the adrenal gland, the adrenal lumbar vein, the artery is underneath, the renal artery and vein. Coming off the renal vein on this side usually is one of the genital veins. You can also see the genital artery here going over to the ovary. Along the back body wall is the iliolumbar artery and vein. And then down low we start to split. This first branch which goes out to the leg is the external iliac artery. The one that goes straight down right here is the internal iliac artery. This one that's coming up is going to circle around and go back to the bladder. So that's the vesicular or uh, umbilical artery. The ones that go straight on forward down the back of the pelvic canal right there are the caudal arteries and veins. The vein here comes off differently than the uh, arteries. This is a common iliac. It doesn't split to over here, where it gives rise to the internal and external iliac veins. As the external iliac vein goes through the body wall, it now becomes the femoral artery vein, and you can see the nerve right here. Okay? It continues on forward. It dives deep right here, going to the other side of the leg is the popliteal artery vein and nerve, and the one that stays on the surface are the saphenous artery vein and nerve. The last thing, is the hepatic portal veins. The viscera are supplied with blood and then the blood drains back to another capillary bed in the liver. So we have a separate set of veins. These are not dyed. So this big brown one right here is the hepatic portal vein. It is picking up the blood flow coming from the spleen and pancreas. So this is the gastrosplenic. This branch now here running with the artery of the same name is the superior mesenteric. The one that gives rise to a, a branch that goes over here to the colon, especially the lower colon, is the inferior mesenteric. Anything that's feeding the intestines is the intestinal arteries and veins. And again, there's four different veins and arteries that go between the pancreas and the duodenum, so these are the pancreatic duodenum.